Thank you. We gather here today not only to recognize the accomplishments in establishing this facility, but also to recognize the future of Wallace. The completion of this facility is the first step in the new era of space exploration at Wallops. We envision Wallops not only being a launch site for carrying supplies to the International Space Station, but expanding its support for placing satellites in Earth orbit and beyond. So Bob Richards, who is a senior vice president at Orbital Sciences, head of their advanced projects group, uh, called me uh, in early January 2007 and uh, said we are uh, interested in the possibility of getting into the medium class ELV business and uh, wanted to know whether Wallops was interested in being considered as our launch site. And of course the answer to that question was, uh, was yes. And so uh, they drove down a couple days later, he and uh, a couple of other members of uh, the Orbital team. And uh, at that point uh, we were looking and considering uh, something that was quite a bit different than what we've turned into, but uh, uh, we were looking at the possibility of flying it from the Spaceports Pad 0B launch complex. So on a, on a cold, rainy day with uh, very high winds in the middle of January, uh, we, we climbed up uh, Pad 0B gantry and uh, looked at the possibilities of that uh, serving as a launch uh, pad for, uh, for what's become the Antares rocket. Uh, and that was kind of the first meeting, first discussions, and uh, we kind of quietly talked about this. Uh, we really didn't, only had a few people here at Wallops that were even aware that we were thinking about that, and uh, uh, kind of lived that way for about the first seven months of the, of the, the process through early 2007. In late July, early August of 2007, Orbital kind of uh, said, we're ready to take this to the next level, and we're ready to give you some, some money to go study some things for us. And that always gets our attention, of course, when people are willing to fund us to do things, we know they're serious. So uh, we put together a little study team uh, that included folks from the range, the spaceport, uh, safety, um, uh, environmental and facilities uh, to look at what might be the potential real issues for, for conducting uh, the Antares launches out of here. And this was all really before the uh, space station resupply was even under consideration. So we took about three months, put together a team that did a really nice job of putting together what the issues would be, how much money it would take to fix the things we needed to fix here at Wallops to make, uh, make that uh, study uh, to make Antares really work here at Wallops and uh, provided that to Orbital uh, right before Christmas in, in, in uh, 2007 and, um, and, and provided that to Orbital and they were very impressed with the report. They were very complimentary of it and I, re I remember uh, lying at home uh, in early January 2008 uh, with a flu and I got a phone call from, from Bob Richards at Orbital saying, uh, J.R. Thompson, the, the vice, executive vice president, uh, wants, to, wants to talk to you about this. And I said, you know, I, could, I was hoarse and could hardly talk, but I was lying, lying in bed there with, without any of my notes. And he, he calls and says, I can't believe any of this stuff is true. Is this really true? Uh, and, and I answered all the stuff uh, that I could about him. And he goes, we need to come down and see you guys. So uh, he and a team of orbital execs uh, all hopped in the car about three days later, showed up at Wallops, and we brought all the folks in to talk about all the real questions they had about whether we could really uh, do this project, uh, you know, whether we had all the questions uh, answered about safety, whether there were any showstoppers, and uh, convinced them uh, that, uh, that uh, we really could uh, do the things that we had said we were going to do in that report. So that report was really the first major accomplishment that convinced Orbital that uh, we, were, we were the place to do this. While we were conducting this study uh, for Orbital, when they really were focused on uh, mostly science missions and other things, uh, it, it so happened that the, uh, the COTS program, the I Space Station Resupply Demonstration Program, uh, reopened a competition and Orbital decided to, to, to go after that work. And during that process, they had, uh, while they were still talking to us, they had baselined in their proposal the, uh, the Florida uh, launch site as, as where they would probably uh, launch from. Uh, but uh, during that process, when we were conducting our study, uh, the, the study really convinced them that we were probably the preferred choice. So uh, they had already submitted their proposals uh, to NASA for the, for the COTS program, but they, uh, 
uh, went in for their final presentation. They called me just before they went and did that and said, hey, we're going to change our proposal to say wallops instead of uh, Florida. Uh, are you guys okay with that? And I said, sure, go ahead. And so uh, at that point, uh, they, they went in and proposed us as their launch site. And uh, you know, a month or so later, actually were selected by NASA for the, for the COTS program. Uh, and uh, in the press release, uh, when Orbital was announced as the winner of the COTS uh, competition, they said, and we're going to launch, uh, our launch site will be Wallops. So that was uh, the, really the first time anybody outside of us in Orbital had uh, any awareness that uh, they were considering us. And uh, that became uh, kind of big news. Uh, that, that turned into uh, kind of a, a bit of a discussion in the press about uh, uh, you know, launch sites and and that, and that took us to kind of the next steps, which is when the Space Board and the states, uh, state of Virginia uh, jumped in to, uh, to start talking about money with, with, with Orbital Sciences. Once the announcement for the COTS program was over, uh, that really had changed Orbital's plans for Antares. It originally had been thought they might launch one or maybe two missions a year per year if they launched that a year, and it was a bit more of a campaign sort of thing. But now with the COTS and Space Station Resupply programs, uh, they really needed a bigger uh, kind of configuration here, so it became almost a quasi-permanent uh, proposal to, to launch uh, and, and conduct their operations out of Wallops. That really changed the, the uh, scope of what we were thinking about and new facilities and a lot of things like that. And that's really about the time that the spaceport really stepped in and the, and the Commonwealth of Virginia stepped in to, to take over kind of the leadership role in, in doing all of this. Uh, and, and so because that required a lot of money uh, and so Orbital and the spaceport uh, began talking and, uh, and, and the governor's office in Virginia and that's really uh, became kind of the next step because even though they had previously decided Wallops was uh, their launch site, uh, there were, there were uh, discussions about reconsidering that and still going back to Florida depending on what the economic packages of the various states would, would be. So, uh, you know, the, it was really kudos to the, uh, to the state of Virginia for, uh, for putting together a story that uh, reaffirmed the decision to, to come to Wallops. And, and I still remember uh, one, one Friday morning uh, on my day off, I was sitting at home uh, hadn't even uh, gotten dressed for the day yet and Billy Reed, uh, the executive director of the spaceport, was getting ready to go into a meeting with, uh, with the governor and wanted to confirm some facts and so he called me on my cell phone not realizing I wasn't uh, at work. Uh, I was still in my boxer shorts and there's still a picture somewhere out, uh, out there with um, me. My wife took uh, me on my cell phone trying to get better cell phone coverage in my front yard, uh, standing outside uh, trying to, to answer questions for Billy Reed as he got ready to go in to talk to the governor. And ultimately, all of those discussions went well. The Commonwealth of Virginia stepped up and, uh, and provided uh, the funding necessary to convince Orbital to, to bring the project to, to Wallops and, uh, and the rest is history, so to speak. Separation. Bearing separation. Enters 
safe separation. CCAM is initiated and attitude is nominal. Antares has delivered the A1 test mission payload into orbit. We envision Wallops not only being a launch site for carrying supplies to the International Space Station, but expanding its support for placing satellites in Earth orbit and beyond. There may even be a day in the future where we see space tourists fly from the shore. <laughs>